What happened to the comedian who married seven times? A whole lot of litigation. Keep watching for the crazy drama surrounding Richard Pryor's death. One of comedy's greatest voices died in December 2005. The life and long career of the late Richard Pryor made an indelible mark on comedy, on stage and in film. From his early start in the 1960s as a stage comedian, Pryor honed his craft and took his act on the road, finding tremendous success as a stand-up comedian in Las Vegas. Pryor's comedy albums are the stuff of legend, earning him a staggering 10 Grammy nominations with five wins. His writing made its way to both the small and big screen, and his efforts in these capacities were also rewarded with a primetime Emmy win in 1974 for Best Writing in Comedy Variety, Variety, or Music on a Lily Tomlin Special. He also went on to win a Writer's Guild Award for the Mel Brooks film Blazing Saddles. And no sand-winding, bushwhacking, horn-swoggling, crocker crocker is gonna roll away Brooks' cutter! After a long and successful career that spanned four decades, Pryor managed to grow a sizable estate when he died on December 10, 2005. Celebrity net worth estimated that the proceeds for his films, comedy tours, and other endeavors made the star worth a respectable $40 million at the time of his death. With an estate worth that much, you can imagine that settling it would be no easy task. When many people die, a spouse and children are attached to the estate of the deceased though family and debtors can make the probate process lengthy and expensive. A trust can be used to circumvent probate court, frequently keeping litigation out of the process. In Pryor's case, there were a number of hitches that were exposed once the comedian had died. He had married a total of seven times to five different women. He was also the father of seven children, whom he shared with six different mothers. In the conventional legal sense, a basic will would not have been appropriate for this many potential heirs which was probably why Pryor chose to have a trust created. And while a trust is almost always an uncontestable document, California law does allow for several reasons why a trust could be contested in their courts. Jennifer Pryor was both Richard Pryor's fourth and seventh wife. Pryor had a litany of health issues, one of the more serious ones being his 1986 diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. By 1994, Pryor needed caregivers in his home, and he hired his then ex-wife Jennifer to manage them. Pryor also hired her to be his manager. By the year 2000, several of Pryor's children were growing frustrated with their father's manager, alleging that she limited their access to their father. His son Richard Pryor Jr. petitioned the court for a conservatorship of Pryor, only to have the request denied by the judge. Jennifer was able to show legal documents that supported her claims that she was granted power of attorney over Pryor and that the aging comedian was well cared for. But the legal battles were only just beginning. Pryor and Jennifer married each other again in 2001, choosing to have their marriage certificate filed confidentially with the recorder's office. This meant that their marriage was not a matter of public record, as the newlywed couple did not disclose their nuptials to Pryor's children. It likely came as a shock to them that he had named his wife as the primary beneficiary of his trust, news they didn't receive until after his death. A series of lawsuits ensued. Elizabeth Pryor wished to have her father's earlier trust reinstated. She argued that he was suffering from debilitating health conditions when the latest trust was drawn up, and that Jennifer had taken advantage of Pryor's weak physical and mental state at the time. She also alleged in court filings that Jennifer had committed fraud and forgery on various legal documents pertaining to the estate. Elizabeth filed in probate court but lost decisively. The court ruled that, as Pryor's legal wife, Jennifer was entitled to whatever proceeds Pryor had granted her in his trust. Elizabeth then filed with the California Court of Appeals, hoping to gain some leverage on at least invalidating her father and Jennifer's marriage by demanding an annulment. Ultimately, the appeals court ruled in Jennifer's favor, giving Pryor's widow the final victory she needed to control the estate of the late entertainer.